Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is the case of another low back pain. Oh, sh It's a 24-year-old male with no past medical history, presents with low back pain and fever. Says the pain started three days ago. Started in his low back, then moved to his left shoulder, but he started having high fevers and trouble walking. Denies any trauma and denies drug use. Here are his vitals. His temperature is 40.5 degrees Celsius. He is on fire. The human torch literally just checked into your emergency department complaining of low back pain. His heart rate's 126. His blood pressure is 138 over 92. Breathing 26 times a minute, setting 95% on room air. What's your differential? Sepsis, 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 right? He's got multiple surge criteria. We have time constraints placed on us in the care of sepsis patients. So this has got to be in front of your mind. But don't forget your environmental causes and your toxicologic causes when you start to push the temperatures of 40.5 degrees Celsius in an adult patient. On his exam, he's alert and oriented. No pronator drift. 5 out of 5 strength in the upper extremities, but 4 out of 5 strength in the lower extremities. He's following commands, but he tells you he will not walk. You say the gait exam is very important, sir, and he tells you no freaking chance. He bought himself an MRI. MRI. And you can see in our axial view here as we move down, he's got a large fluid collection here as well as here. This is all paraspinal. Adjacent to our spinal cord is this fluid collection. Spinal cord is here, fluid collection here. He's got an epidural abscess. We can take a look on his sagittal view. You can see the large paraspinal abscess here, then the musculature, and then right there, this epidural abscess with compression of the spinal cord. The read. Epidural abscess from L3-4 through S2-3 through with fecal sac compression at L4-5. He also has bilateral abscesses of the paraspinal musculature. What are our red flags for back pain? Your diagnosis of concern are spinal fractures, cauda equina syndrome, spinal infection, and malignancy. So how do I check for these? Well, I do it with my history and physical. If I'm worried about a fracture, I ask the patient about trauma or any point tenderness right in the midline. Cauda equina syndrome, I ask them about bladder and bowel incontinence. Are they having any saddle anesthesias? And I'll throw the ultrasound on them, take a look at that bladder, see if it's distended. For spinal infection, I always ask about fever and IV drug abuse, which our patient here denied today. If I'm worried about metastases or malignancy, I'll ask if they have a history of malignancy, family history of malignancy, the cancer anywhere else in the body that may have metastasized to their low back. And with all low back pain patients, I have a very low threshold for that one-fingered handshake, the rectal exam. In our case, we have an epidural abscess. Overall, the incidence of these is pretty low. Your risk factors are diabetes, injection drug abuse, end-stage renal disease, alcoholism, or immunosuppression. And the reason I ask about injection drug abuse and why our patient was asked about it is because hematogenous spread is the most common source for an epidural abscess. And the classic triad, which means you'll see it in the book and you'll see it on the test, but very rarely see it in the patient, back pain, fever, and progressive neurologic deficits. He went to the OR with orthopedic surgery for an IND and laminectomy. Found to have MSSA bacteremia and MSSA wound culture. Echo showed no vegetations, and he was discharged with a pick line for prolonged antibiotics. Our take-home points is beware of the red flags. That's why they're called red flags. Your back pain diagnoses of spinal fracture, cauda equina syndrome, spinal infection, metastases, or malignancy. And then your spinal epidural abscess, Know the triad of back pain, fever, and neuro findings. More common on the test than in the actual emergency department. The diagnosis made with MRI, and then the treatment with broad-spectrum antibiotics and surgical drainage. Thank you to one of our second years, Ashley Phipps, for this case. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at weir underscore Alec, or subscribe to this channel for more updates from Morning Report Emergency Medicine. Thanks for watching.